With each new meta, previously dominating heroes get pushed out in favor of other ones. We had Dive, where Genji and Tracer were key and queen, but have they aged well with each new meta? I'm Grandmaster Prey, and today we're going to be looking at 6 of the worst win raid heroes, as well as discuss why they're in this position. Before we get started, make sure to check out GameLeap.com for hundreds of pro guides made by top 500 professionals to make your climb fast. Without further ado, let's get started. Number 6, Tracer at 49.09%. Ah, Tracer. The sweetheart of dive meta. Zoom shooty time girl used to be easily the best dive hero in Overwatch. She had the best mobility in the game, self sustain with her recall, massive damage with her pulse bomb, and even though she had 150 HP, her tiny hitbox with her massive mobility allowed her to be an absolute pest. NYXL dominated the dive meta landscape, but everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Nah, just kidding. It's Brigida. Brigida? Upon release was able to use her shield bash and simply just keep Tracer in a stun lock and kill her with no counterplay. The counterplay was to switch. So many pro players hated this and went up in arms about it. Siegel even said this. The problem just turned Tracer into basically a troll pick. Like as of right now, even though Brigida can't one shot combo Tracer anymore, she still gives her team armor and Tracer can't do anything against armor. You're essentially looking at around 80 to 100 perfectly placed body shots as Tracer to get rid of that armor that Brigida gives to her team. Now of course Brigida's ultimate is being changed where she doesn't give permanent armor, but instead gives 30 seconds of armor, and with armor being nerfed, we're hoping that Tracer will be more viable. But in the position she's now, yeah, she's a bit more viable than she was before, but she's still in a horrible spot. Let's compare it to Genji. Genji has less consistent mobility with his dash cooldown, substantially longer than Tracer's dash, unless you manage to get the reset on reset on reset. But Genji still has no horizontal mobility that Tracer has, but he also has that vertical mobility. This means Genji already has the advantage over Tracer, especially in the meta where there's a ton of vertical mobility meta heroes, some of which include Winston, D.Va, Widow, Hanzo, and now the newest release, Ash. You can already see that she's already at a disadvantage where there's just too many of these heroes that go vertical and Tracer just essentially can't reach them quick enough. She has to use the map to find ways to use her dashes to get to that high ground, but that takes time and if there's a spot that's impossible to reach without vertical mobility, which there's a lot of, you're screwed. Tracer's biggest strength is being able to mess with the backline using her mobility to get in and get out. And we're seeing the shift where more and more heroes are able to reach areas that Tracer can't get to. Like I said, I am extremely hopeful for the changes in armor and I personally think Tracer is one of the most fun and diverse characters in Overwatch. But seeing how the meta is shifting in this regard, we can't be too hopeful that Pew Pew Deja Vu Girl will be one of the best heroes, but only time will tell. Number 5, Winston at 48.49%. You're probably thinking, Prey, didn't you just say that Winston was meta? Well, yeah, he is, but the reason that he has such a low win rate is because Winston requires some level of coordination and to personally know what the opportunity is to go in. Keep in mind I'm talking about general win rates, like win rates across all ranks. So where he's going to have a low win rate in lower elos, he's actually going to have a better win rate the higher ranks you go through. This is because even though Winston isn't difficult mechanically, the amount of game sense needed to turn Winston into a god is massive. We have a video on Winston, you guys should totally check it out. <coughs> Not plugging by the way. But anyways, you'll see in low elo, Winston's play entirely wrong. They'll essentially either treat him like a frontline tank using his bubble and staying in front of his team so he soaks up damage, or they'll treat him like a dive assassin by using all their cooldowns to dive into the middle of the enemy team and just get slaughtered for it. Let's not even mention the Roadhog Dilemma that Winston also falls prey to. What I mean by the Roadhog Dilemma is that because Roadhog has a large hitbox, lots of health, and massive sustain, you're looking at essentially an ult battery for the enemy team. If Roadhog soaks all that damage and ult economy is one of the most important factors in whether you win or lose a team fight. Winston falls under the same category. Large hitbox, lots of health, and when he pops ult, massive sustain. If a Winston soaks up too much damage, they're going to feed the enemy ult charge. So that with the fact that Winston's and lower elos make this mistake, it's easy to see why Winston's one of the lowest win rate heroes. Number 4, Soldier76 at 48.48%. Now this one makes me super sad. I've been a soldier main in previous seasons where he was viable. I have the most hours on him and he was essentially my go-to hero. Like, he's not entirely bad in terms of damage. 
In fact, he has the potential to dish out the most damage out of any hero in the game. The problem is that all of this damage is just sustained damage. What I mean is that Soldier rarely has any opportunity to go for that burst damage other than his helix rocket. He can dish out a ton of damage but just never burst. On top of that, literally every hitscan DPS does his job way better than he can. We got Ash, McCree, and Widow that just does his job a lot better. It's like Soldier 76 is on his deathbed and Blizzard just sent out these three goons to drag him to some dirty scuffed alleyway and just told him to beat him up and take his Yeezys or something. It's a horrible sight. Trust me. I've been there. On top of that, he's the only DPS hero in Overwatch that relies heavily on medium range tracking for maximum effectiveness. Given this playstyle unique to him, what reason would anyone have to master that playstyle if Soldier gets outclassed by literally every other hitscan who relies primarily on flicking rather than concise tracking? Soldier 76 requires way too much effort to make as effective as any other hitscan hero, and because of that, he's seen way better days. Number 3. Doomfist at 48.37%. Now a lot of us are glad that this guy is being gutted, but some people, like myself, think Blizzard went a little too overboard following the hate, except for Brigida. Brigida. Now what I mean by this is that basically everything in his kit except for his fist got nerfed and got nerfed hard. Let's start with his uppercut. Remember when Doomfist's uppercut suspended you in the air for a solid 3 or so seconds with no way to move until you hit the ground? Yeah. Used to be at his mercy, and only a bonobo would totally mess up killing someone when he had them uppercutted. Unless he was CC'd or the person uppercutted was bubbled or something. Now, when Doomfist uppercuts, the enemy can move in the air. You know what this means? Doomfist is essentially doing the enemy a favor by giving anyone he uppercuts a super jump ability. Isn't that sweet? His seismic slam's range was reduced, and as a result, the damage reduced also because the damage scales with the distance traveled. Hero is so fucking tilting. His ultimate's area of effectiveness was increased, and that sounds hopeful for Doomfist mains, but guess what? The damage on it is reduced. Aside from his punch, playing against Doomfist is like having a grown ass man on Xanax at a slumber party beating you with pillows or something of the sort. And they say it was all for the better of Overwatch, but we'll have to see. Number 2 McCree at 48.36%. So I was shocked at this one. I think McCree is one of the best hit scans to play right now. With his fan the hammer buff, he can quickly dispatch anyone in the game, even Roadhog. But then I realized, oh yeah, Goats is his thing. McCree gets stomped by Goats due to his low mobility, and even though he can peel with his flashbang, it's not going to stop the Lucio speed boosted steroid train to crash on him. His ultimate is the worst ultimate in the game. You essentially turn yourself into a snail for 5 seconds with glowing red eyes right on his head that puts Black Ops 4 to shame, and that charge time. Oh my god, that charge time takes so long and can be countered by so many things in the game that you're better off using it as a reload. And that's what high elo players do. They use their ultimates as a reload. Now if that isn't the most boring concept, then I don't know what is. His ultimate is in need of a serious rework, but other than that, his effectiveness really comes out if the player has good aim. And because in low elo, that's not really seen as much, McCree's going to have a really hard time. Number 1. Sombra at 47.13% Wow, I remember when Sombra was one of the most annoying heroes in the game. She has permanent invisibility, a free get out card, a hack that took less than a second but lasted 6 seconds, an EMP that hacked everyone for the same time, and could see low HP people through walls. And the thing is, they changed nothing about this. So why did Sombra switch from an annoying OP hero to the worst win rate hero in Overwatch? Well, the truth is, she's always been like this, but her niche playstyle requires a lot of skill and decision making to turn her into a monster. Sombra doesn't have the best damage but she makes it up in utility. She's essentially so annoying, because if she wasn't, she'd be absolutely useless. You know, I'd be totally down for a rework where Sombra does more damage in exchange for less hack time, or more counterplay or something of the sort. But given how she is now, we can see why she's at the lowest win rate. Let's make it clear that the higher elo you go, the more massive her win rate becomes. For example, in bronze, she's at a measly 35% win rate, but in grandmaster, she's all the way up at 53.6%. 
This can be cut out to people in lower elos treating her like an assassin and not really knowing how the game works and playing her to her potential. But in higher elo, not only do people have a solid grasp of how to make Sombra work, but also the team is coordinated enough to really let her shine. Some of the most annoying ult combos include Sombra EMP with ults like Soldier Ult, Diva Bomb, and Shatter. Hint for a future video by the way. It leaves her enemies with no counterplay other than to just run before they get wiped. So when it all comes down to it, the reason these heroes have low win rates are for two reasons. One, there are more heroes that excel better in what said hero can do in every way. And two, they have a high skill cap that requires a decent understanding of game sense. This list isn't in any way to tell you to never pick up these heroes or disregard them. Maybe except Doomfist because that dude is gone. But if you're going to pick up these heroes, keep in mind what you need to know in order to make them succeed. Learn game sense, learn to be smart, and learn to maximize what each hero can do. And you guys can do that with Gameleap.com, where we make hundreds of pro guides made by top 500 professionals. If you want to learn Sombra or Winston to make them work in your scenario, make sure to check out Gameleap and sign up to improve your gameplay today. Thanks for watching guys, make sure to like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out.